Welcome to the Sizer online tutorial. This video will go through the multiple options available for the bearing design. Since the main focus of this video is on the bearing, details concerning the 3 meter beam are pretty basic and are defined as follow. The software completes detailed bearing design. You can decide to apply different information about the bearing either on all support, separately on the left or right hand support, or if it's the case, specific supports located in between. For the purpose of this example, all support will have the same detail. You can then decide on the various type, material, species, and grade available in the software for the bearing. Therefore, in this example, we will use a SPF lumber wall of grade number 1 or 2. The bearing where support ends or is highly stressed option indicates that the supporting member ends at the supporting member so that the factor KB is not applied. Or, in the case that it's an area of high bending stress, to take into account 086 6.5.7.5, which says KB is not to be applied in that circumstance. For the main bearing length, you can leave it as unknown and Sizer will automatically determine the length based on the feature you decide to toggle when running the design. In fact, these four choices become available for an unknown bearing length. Use exact minimum will generate bearings equal to the minimum length required for them to withstand the loaded beam. This is the default toggled feature. Round minimum to closest will round up the minimum bearing length to the closest value displayed in the scroll down menu, which is half an inch in this case. From list of bearing length choices, we'll select the minimum length suitable for the design from the list main bearing length. And if it concerns the element, the last choice will round up the length to minimum for the end support and will determine the length of the interior supports from the scroll down list we have just mentioned. By leaving unknowns within the bearing design, ultimately the length of the member is going to change when you run the design. It is also possible to enter your own value for the length, width, and point load of the bearing. In the bearing area input, there are options for inputting notch at exterior supports. You have the option of specifying them at the top or bottom edges of the beams. If you input a notch that exceeds the minimum rules of the code and run the design, Sizer will automatically warn you that your notch detail is no good. One of the warnings states that the notch extends up to one third of the length into the span. This requirement actually comes from the NDS, but is a practical limit since a notch exceeding that length is not very practical. Similarly, if the notch depth is greater than 25% of the depth of the member, Sizer will give you a warning and tell you in the design results that the notch exceeds the requirements of the wood standard. I just want to highlight that this version allows you to design Simpson hangers. Sizer calls a Simpson Strong Tie a tool that designs hangers based on the lowest cost index, and Sizer performs the same analysis of this tool and reports the bearing capacity and details directly in the design output. While selected, you have the option to choose its header, species, size, style, and model, which will quickly generate its resistance and cost index. When assigning the bearing type of the member as a Simpson hanger, the option of selecting the main bearing length and width becomes unavailable. The software will generate a predetermined value for that information based on the model of the Simpson hanger chosen. Once the hanger is selected, unloads added, the detailed bearing design will report the capacity of the hangers and report the design ratios of the member. The name of the hanger and its fastening details is also reported in the beam details area of the design output. 